Hello everybody and welcome to your next C Sharp programmer. Now, uh, pro my bad. C Sharp programming tutorial. Sorry. So, uh, in this tutorial, I'm just going to be teaching you how to optimize and improve some of the code. Um, one section of the code that we did for the animation. And you will be saying, why am I doing this? Well, part of being a programmer is not just being able to program, but to make your programs efficient. Anybody can be like, oh, I can program. But to separate a good programmer from a great programmer, or from a mediocre programmer from a good programmer, is from co the code quality and the optimization and the way they've coded it and so on and so forth and the algorithms they use. So one part of coding is that one main thing you don't want to get into the habit of is repeating certain sections of your code where it is not needed to be repeated. So if we look at it before, we've said it we said that we said that position y and position x was plus equals to move speed times float game time dot elapsed game time dot total seconds, right? and we could do that because whatever it, it doesn't take up too much time but if you want to save time and make it more efficient or more friendly for you then you could indeed put move speed is equal to speed times whatever like this and then instead of doing this then you wouldn't have to do times float uh, game time dot lapse game time dot total seconds four different times over how many directions you're doing it for or how many buttons you're doing it for so this method it just makes it a little bit easier on you now where did I get the speed variable from it's the same as what I had move speed as before I just set to 200 uh, saying that it's 200 times the game the total seconds now some of you might be asking could there's such thing as plus equals there's minus equals there's times equals and divide equals right and some of you might be saying okay why do I have to make a different speed variable how come I can't do move speed and times equals uh, game time dot lapse game time dot total seconds the problem is that it would work for the first iteration of the loop but every other iteration your move speed would get slower and slower why is this so well if you notice in the last tutorial I, I showed you that my game time total seconds is about 0 0.166667 right and if we do 200 times that then you get approximately like 33.3 so your player would move 33.3 pixels in the direction that you specify, right? So imagine if we do this, we say 200 times equals this, which is the same as saying move speed is equal to move speed times whatever, but this is just a shorter way of doing it. So it's saying 200 times 0 point whatever, and then you get 33, move speed will equal to 33. So then it will be 33 times 0 0.166667 and then say that gives you the value 10. Then it will be 10 times 0 0.166667 and then after a while your move speed will become so slow your player will become stagnant and your player wouldn't even move. So that is the reason why we can't go about it and that's why I said in capital letters it will not work. So this is an alternate method that you can go about it and it could just make your job a bit easier. Now also I believe that in the last tutorial, I'm not sure if I got rid of this in the last tutorial because I never made a C-sharp tutorial in a while, but in case I didn't, uh, in, when I was teaching you about player animations I had player dot uh, position or whatever and then I was setting it I was setting the animation position to the player um, position and then resetting it again down here and doing the same for the current frame and such so uh, don't worry you don't have to do anything up here uh, it will handle it down here sorry if I'm repeating myself because I don't remember if I've done it but basically when we the animation doesn't alter the player's position all it does is do the actual animation so this the player stores the animation and we send the player's animation to the actual player's position and since the play the animation class and alter it that means the position is going to stay the same 
meaning that we don't have to set the animation's position to the player's position and then res and then change the player's position and then reset it back to the animation class. So if that didn't really make sense to you, just you just don't need to put anything here about the player position or the current frame Y up here. You can handle it at the bottom after you've modified the current values. So that is it for this tutorial. I know it was kind of short, but look forward to your next tutorial. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed this, and bye.